patient hearing and I'm very Well, good evening, everybody, and a special thanks to the entire team IDEC and, of course, Dr. Unni Krishnan for being so courteous. And, of course, Sujay and Sinha, sir. It was mind-boggling talk. Of course, uh, the icing on the cake was Shirini spoke on a very difficult topic. But, Sujay, that was an awesome presentation. You know, there's so much of, uh, I would say, lucidity to such a dry topic that you got in. I was really, truly mesmerized. And I thought that let us exchange a couple of sessions or let us cancel a couple of sessions and allow Sujay a couple of more sessions to continue. So that was my feeling, was right? So let us put hands together to Dr. Sujay Ghosh, please. Thank you very much. Beautiful it was. And of course, Dr. Sina also has set a stage where immunity starts playing a trick. And what better experience that we had, we all had rather, when we all managed our COVID patients where probably rather than a viral disease, it was a, an absolute immune blizzard which actually hit the society. And then people were wondering and all kinds of ideas and thoughts were coming up. We were trying to find out the risk factors. Initially, if you remember during the first year, Shrini, we talked about, you know, it is possible that the patients, those who are smokers, those who have what COPD or a bronchial asthma patients, these are the patients who are most likely to suffer with a very severe COVID, but which was completely untrue. In fact, we have found out that smokers were protected. COPDs, those who are on with inhaled steroids were protected, right? And then came a good amount of publications, which started slowly establishing as the knowledge evolved, which still is evolving, that there are so many factors which determine the intensity of the COVID and the COVID-related outcomes in various comorbid conditions. And one such is on your screen is obesity, where you can see that the hazard ratio is nearly six times higher. And we all know that obesity is a pandemic. So let's talk about this bidirectional relationship between COVID and obesity when these two pandemics have collided, how it has really impacted all of us. According to me, COVID and obesity was a making of a perfect storm. It was a path of a perfect storm. There are a few disclosures that I have before I really deliberate on this topic, is this that let us understand that our COVID knowledge is still evolving. Don't take COVID as over. It can hit you back and it still continues to teach us a lot many things. And the discussions based are on the lot of data and publications which have come up. And I'll just give you a bird's eye view because it's a huge topic. Now, sir has already said that COVID and obesity is a bi-directional relationship. But one thing is for sure common is a very high mortality and morbidity associated when these two combine together. So let's see first what obesity does to COVID and how obesity treats COVID. And it's not a rocket science. Now we all are very well aware that the moment somebody is obese and the BMI is more than 35, the chances of hospitalization and the related complications, including the invasive ventilations, are technically nearly six to seven times higher. And there's a good UK data which has been published where you can see that the chance of get these patients getting hospitalized because of the COVID-related complication goes up by around two and a half times the chances of getting admitted into the intensive care becomes more than four times higher. And the chances of being on the mechanical ventilation is nearly six and a half times higher. So that is the impact of COVID. And it was not just true in adults, but it was true in the French studies related to obese children. And not only that, COVID and obesity also increases the hospital stay of the patients. And not only that, the chances of recovery or the delayed recovery is very, very high. So people living with obesity, they will have a very stormy course if they are hit by COVID. And a small COVID insult can really inflict a huge damage, which is obvious on this slide, where you can see that the chance of being just positive with COVID increases by nearly 50%. Hospitalization goes by around 115%. The intensive care need can go up to 75% up. And most importantly, 
the chance of dying is 48%. Now, if I say 48% or 50%, it may not really intensively hit you here. But what if I say that every second patient has a chance of higher mortality? Now, that is what COVID and obesity related is, re, uh, relation is. And they'll suffer longer, they'll develop more complications, and they'll stay a long time in the hospitals. And remember that more the patients are bedridden, the chances of high mortality exponentially goes up. So the million dollar question comes, why this association? Why this lethal association? Why these intertwig dragons, they prove to be so much mortal? And we all have seen, in fact, beautifully talked by Dr. Sina, uh, it, it's the relationship of immune story. But of course, obesity has its own challenges. We all are aware about it. Pulmonary challenges for sure, impaired pulmonary perfusion leading to hypervascularity and hyperviscosity, hyperviscosity leading, leading to the COVID-associated coagulopathy. Along with it, the chances of, you know, a proper ventilation goes down. The prone ventilation we talked about was not very adequately addressed. Of course, there is an associated endocrine dysfunction where not only diabetes, as uh, probably Unni is going to talk about, but the other endocrine organs, they also suffer, which ultimately leads to high cardiovascular and a metabolic challenges. But the most important thing on the platform of the chronic inflammation that obesity has with COVID, there is a dysregulated hyperimmune response. So this immune storm which we talked about, or that is never an immune storm, that is usually a dysregulated, desensitized immune response which is responsible for this high mortality. We all know that ideally, all of us should stay in what is called as an M2 environment, which is a pro-inflammatory, sorry, anti-inflammatory environment, where there is a good amount of T helper lymphocytes which are there, the eosinophils are fairly fine. But the moment there is an obesity, it doesn't take longer time to change this M2 environment to M1 environment because of the elevated fatty acid levels, the insulin resistance, the leptin resistance, the high levels of reptin, leptin, <coughs> reduced levels of adiponectin. But the most important factor which actually affects the COVID outcomes is a high expression of ACE2 receptors. Now, Sujaya has beautifully said us that nature is so great and he, he, he actually demonstrated it in his slides that you, know, you cannot beat God. And obese people, they have got a natural protection of higher number of ACE2s. And why ACE2s are important? We need to understand the importance of ACE2. ACE2s are important basically because this is the enzyme which will inhibit or neutralize the angiotensinogen 1 as well as 2, which are actually responsible for vasoconstriction, reduced tissue perfusion, or to certain extent, elevation of the blood pressure. Now, this is how the RAS system works, and this is an inhibitory mechanism which protects. So a 1,9 angiotensinogen 2 gets converted into a 1,7, you know, a protective angiotensinogen through the ACE2 receptors, and they are high in number. But then that has become a challenge in obese people, basically because we know that virus hits the ACE2 receptors, and it needs an ACE2 receptor for the cellular entry. And that's how, you know, it utilizes all that ACE2 which is available. So there is a high amount of viremia and replication which is happening. So in the obese patients where there is already a very high ACE2 expression, these patients are extremely vulnerable to develop very severe hyperemia in comparison to the non-obese people. So wherever there is an ACE2 increase, there is an increased viral entry, viral load goes up, inflammation goes up, and of course that ultimately ends up into a severe cardiometabolic and respiratory insult leading to the complications. But apart from that, when it gets combined with obesity, where there is a pulmonary challenge, there is an endocrine challenge, there is an inflammatory challenge on the base, the ARDS, the ventilation uh, perfusion mismatch, which will ultimately increase the chances of invasive ventilation, will also increase the morbidity and mortality. There are a few other roles of some other receptors as well. One is what is called as a glucose-regulated protein 78. As ACE2s are, glucose-regulated proteins 78 are also responsible to stop 
the premature cell death or to stop the premature cell apoptosis. But they also need, a, 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 I, I would say, a proper regulation and COVID virus also attacks this GRP78 protein and which is responsible for actually prevention of cell apoptosis. Another way is this that GRP plus additional endoplasmic reticular stress, which is basically because of obesity, will increase the viral entry, will reduce down the GRP78 availability, will increase the cellular apoptosis and the chances of cellular death goes up significantly. Insulin resistance, Unni is going to talk, I'm not going to dwell into that, but also because of the obesity, you have got very high leptin levels because of the leptin resistance. And we all know the impact of leptins, I'm not going to go into the details about it. There are a few other mechanisms which I don't want all of you to remember or go through, but just see this, that these are the proteins and various expressions of the receptors and the receptor proteins, which actually increases the chance of complications at the vascular level. They'll increase the angiogenesis, they'll increase the vascular viscosity, and they'll also increase the chances of hypercoagulability that ultimately leads to what we call it as a COVID-associated coagulopathy. And COVID-associated coagulopathy, we all have learned during our COVID times, is a big challenge. Last two minutes, I'll be talking to you about COVID and obesity. What is the relation of COVID with obesity? Now, what COVID has caused to the obese people? We always talked about what obesity has caused to COVID people, but let us see what COVID has caused to the obese people. Now, that is last five minutes. So, poor mobility, limited access to the medical care, technically, especially in the first two waves, all the, all the medical as well as surgical programs for the management of obesity halted. Obesity clinics stopped practicing. Endocrinologists stopped practicing obesity. They were all busy managing the COVID and the related endocrine challenges. That has changed the eating habits of the people because of the lockdown. There was an increased screen time and psychosocial stress. And here I am saying social, social media stress that the people went through. And these have all impacted not only on the obesity, but you can see that there were strained food systems, processed food consumption was very, very high, changes in the eating behaviors were very high, and there was a tendency to consume unhealthy, high sucrose, high saturated fatty acid food which was available. And that was the challenge, and this is a beautiful study which was published from Italy, where they have shown that you can see that various meals and look at the significance. And apart from that, added psychological disturbance like anxiety, depression, stress, and PTSD added to binge eating or what we call it as bulimia nervosa. People kept on eating very, very badly. And that's the reason why we need to understand it is just not obesity impacting the COVID outcome, but COVID also has impacted the outcomes of obesity significantly. To summarize, friends, you know, with all this complicated, very intricate relationship that COVID and obesity has. Let us understand that obesity increases the risk of COVID-related hospitalization, ICU stay, and COVID-associated COVID coagulopathy. There are social determinants of healthy obesity and chronic diseases, and severe negative outcomes from COVID were all reported not only in India, but throughout the world. And these negative impacts also affected a mental health of the people, which additionally caused a lot of psychosocial disturbances, which we probably are being Indians, we do not actually attribute these facts very seriously. But this is the time to learn about addressing these factors very seriously. Thank you very much once again. Thank you, Anjali, for this beautiful opportunity. I really appreciate it. And once again, thank you, Dr. Unni, for a favor that you did to me. Thank